Super Smash Brothers! Dun, 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 dun. Careful, careful, Nintendo's gonna copy Yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, they probably will anyway because, hey, we're watching their stuff. Uh, hi, everybody. At the very welcome. least, they're gonna take part of the profits for it. Well, yeah, yes. But, hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Renegades Watch, uh, Renegades React to uh, the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Direct. Uh, Today for us, it it is uh, November first, twenty eighteen. Yep. And um, well, I have remained spoiler free on this as as much as I can because half of the half of my YouTube uh, subscription list is is uh, talking about this, and I'm just like, okay, nope, nope, yeah. nope, 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 nope. I might have okay. fucked up earlier today, Nick. I watched a watch don't. mojo video. Don't and I think it showed me something that I wasn't supposed to see. Don't. I almost watched Black Nerd's reaction to it today because we'll I love uh, him. Andre. It might have just been that I was seeing something that got announced in an earlier direct. Okay. So. That that's fair. Well, enough. uh we will uh we'll figure that out. We'll find but, out. Uh, so after the break. No. So for me, <laughs> I okay. There are things that are still unanswered. There are at least two characters. From the from the uh, from the teaser thing that haven't been announced, I'm well, curious okay. to see what so, you know what if we're gonna get any more if we do or not. Oh, I, mean, I guarantee I you there are more characters. I I hope so. Um, as for uh, as for the mystery section of the uh, of the main menu, there was oh. one part of it that was blanked out. Yep, and I have been saying that the cutscenes that are included in this mm -hmm. are part of a are part of a storyline like a, like a main storyline thing that's going to be happening yeah. in the game kind of like been hotly argued series. where people are like no they have nothing to do with any of it and yeah stuff. well they have had pre-rendered like pre-rendered stuff before for trailers yeah. yeah i get that but to me i i think the opportunity is there to do it, and plus one thing that people say they loved about Smash Brothers Brawl, you know, I know a lot of the Smash community considers that game a step backwards in terms of the gameplay. But because I mean, the it's single so slow. like, like the but, story mode was great. But Sesame Cemetery was awesome, dude. It was and sick. I want <clears throat> another. I want another thing like that. I want another story mode like that, effectively. So one of their main points is that people don't seem to understand that not actual gameplay does not mean that this will not be in the game. It means this is not the gameplay. This is a cutscene. This is not yeah. the this game. Is a not a gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Right not actual front of gameplay you. footage. Yeah. yeah they basically that. have to put that on there now because people are dumb and they'll be like, "Oh, the game looked like it was going to be way cooler than it else." Oh gosh. Yeah. It's they, like it's going to be yeah. Smash Brothers. What do you and expect? I, and I like <laughs> games that nowadays actually render their cutscenes in game, like God of War. Yeah, yeah. stuff rendered, rendered in engine is sweet. Yes. Yeah, and like a Spider Man where you come back out and you're automatically swinging again. So yeah. Nick's Nick's been really playing good. the Spooderman yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I've been playing Spider Man. Yeah, it's I like it a really lot. Good, it's good, fucking isn't it? good, isn't it? I literally just saw the Stan Lee thing. And <laughs> I was just sitting up you in the stream room. And everybody else was downstairs eating, and I was just sitting up there like, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I yeah, heard that. Is. I heard that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like is Nick doing? going crazy? And then when you said, you said Stan Lee, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Put yeah. Stan Lee in the Spider Man game. Real, yeah. real good. So, I was like, you didn't good. know that? <laughs> so, all right. Okay, enough talk. Just yeah, do it. Let's just, let's do just it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Dive head just, first. I have it. waited this long. <laughs> just do it. Click. Uh oh. Eight player. Nothing, no, nothing we haven't seen. That was a Ridley. Yeah, that was a Ridley. Yeah. Ah, Had that been really announced here. before? Yes. Okay. Yep. I didn't know that. Hell Ridley yeah. was announced like was one of the very first things we found out. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. and K Rool was the last thing at the. As... Hello, Mashed Potato Samurai. Sora Limited. And this Sakurai is Sensei. Nintendo Direct before the launch of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. What's the release date? Fourteenth. Um, Fourteenth uh, of this, this month. December. December. No, it's sooner than that. Our entire team has worked really hard. Man, look With at all this those Nintendo characters. Direct, we'll have revealed every fighter you can find in the game. Hey, okay, new fighters. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Mashed potato samurai. December 7th. Okay. I had it so, wrong. So, yeah. I figured it was Oh, December. hey. 
Hey, Mac. Wait. That's Ken. That has it has to be. It's Ken. I already saw the red gi. I was yes. like, it's Ken. <laughs> Bring it on. Yes! Jody Oaken! <laughs> oh baby. <laughs> Man. I hope I hope he's not just a Ken clone or a Ryu clone. Instead, he's actually. I feel like he probably is an Echo. Probably. Good night. Oh uh, what? Wait, what? Who the hell are you? Is that K rule? No. Or is that our? Or is that our? I think that's got to be our next fighter. Ooh. Oh. That oh. man's hey, oh. dead. Uh-oh. Tup, 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 tup. Uh-oh. What? Oh, fuck no! It's Incineroar! Ooh, yeah! Oh, shit! No, get ready, <laughs> Nate. So, wanna fight fire with fire, huh? Very cool. Look at this wrestling ass motherfucker. Yeah. Masha. Oh, suplex! <laughs> oh! Backbreaker! Oh! Oh, look at the pose! Whoa, Pikachu Libre? Sick. Just in. <laughs> That's the tail. No, wait for it. Uh oh. Malicious Moon Salt! And Woo! half all, all of the front row is now dead. Oh, <laughs> the entire stadium fucking dead. Well, there goes Ken. K.O. Next. Oh. Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> Man, I love Bowser Jr. Just like, yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm next. <laughs> okay, wait. So oh, there's right there. There's boom. Ken. And, and then, then around the other side is the Oh, look at Wario! Wario's fucking Wah! dead! Wah! <laughs> oh, no. Rivals, ally slash rivals. rival Ken joins as an Echo Fighter. In his original game, Ken could be considered Ryu's Echo Fighter. Though perhaps you could say Luigi is the original Echo Fighter. It's but true. Let's get back to Ken. Fuck off, Mario! Ken has been distinguished from Ryu over the years, but the Ken you'll see this time is based on Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Okay. Cool. Here's how he'll differ from Ryu. His heavy Shoryuken turns up the heat. A lot like Roy. Is different too. Oh! And his Tatsumaki Senpukeku strikes opponents multiple times. Tatsumaki Senpukeku! Hell no. wheel. Focus attack. Okay. Yep. We've included lots of Ken's signature moves, such as his famous kicks, which change the axe kick. Yeah. Oh, He's that's a cool. Bit faster than Ryu, and we've also incorporated other tweaks from recent titles. Just like Ryu, he has two final smashes. I'm oh. sorry. First, the spinning uppercut. Shin the fun. Yeah. We've made Shin it look flashy yeah. as it is in the versus series. Dude, it looks fucking good. Execute a final smash near an opponent, and you'll instead perform a Shikujin right there. Wow. Goodbye. Okay. Now for our last new challenger, Incineroar. Yup. It may be a Pokemon, but it mainly uses pro wrestling moves. Uh huh. Such. Nice German <laughs> suplex. Hey, the swing. Like a true pro wrestler, when one of its attacks is successful, Flying knee. it'll pose for the audience. Uh huh. Luckily, you can cancel out of these poses at any time. Oh, so nice. For additional enemy attacks. Its neutral special is called Darkest Lariat. Yep. It was Incineroar's signature move in the Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon games. Yep. Perhaps it's something of a red It's like cyclone. the Luigi Cyclone almost. Its yeah. special is Cross Chop. You'll oh, that... up and come rocketing back down. Yeah, and it, it hits like this. This can be yeah. very effective, but if you mess up, it's easy to self-destruct. So be careful. Oh, yeah. For its special, Incineroar makes opponents run the ropes after a dashing grab. When they bounce back your way, press the button at just the right moment. Nice. If you're too early, yes. you'll do a back body drop. Wait too long, and you'll fail. Do the timing, and you'll pull off a powerful lariat. Yeah! Man. Its down special is revenge. 
So it's a counter. When damaged, Incinera's burning passion comes to the surface, powering oh. up the next attack. Oh! That's Incinera's idea of a counter attack. And it's Absorb the damage and then re and then. Oh, yeah. It's even faster and fiercer than the Z move it's based on. Yeah. Full We've roster. Revealed all of the fighters you'll find in the game. Nice. This is the initial fighter select screen. There oh, aren't very many at first. What the it fuck? It is the same amount as the original Nintendo 64 game. That's true. Yeah, it's true. And once there are only eight. Them all, oh, fucking A. <sighs> It'll look like this. Ooh! It may seem hard to guess where each one's oh. located, but they're sorted by number. <laughs> oh! Oh! I nice. With all 74 Ooh. fighters on the roster. Oh. Oh, my. Amiibo. Okay, what are they gonna do with these? Nice. So we're getting a new Smash Inkling Amiibo. Oh, look at that Ridley. Look at the fucking Ridley. I have to buy that just to have it. Yeah, I have right. To have that too. That Star Wolf. Nice. nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Can't let you do that, Star Fox. Okay, I'm reserving. I'm reserving yeah. those. You may recall there were ah, available later. Damn. The game. Here's a look at the new amiibo figures. I feel like I need an Isabel figure too. <laughs> right? <laughs> Isabel's just too cute. Gaming icons Wait. clash. Wait. Collectible trophies wouldn't be a great fit for this game. What? what? Honestly, they were really difficult to develop too. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. said, the Super Smash Brothers series is one massive crossover at heart. And we want true. to create something more Very true. A way to enjoy characters other than fighters from a variety of video game worlds. Huh? Okay. Here's what we came up with. They're called spirits. Spirits? Okay. And I don't mean the spooky kind. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay. Alright, Sakurai. We'll lend a helping hand to your fighters, powering them up in battle. Wait. Is this like the equipment thing? Maybe. In the Super Smash Brothers series, the characters are toys in the real world. Yeah. They are fighters in the world of the imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Returning to the real world is an ongoing theme. In the imagination, you can battle impossible combinations of characters. Gosh. Oh, any good memories. In this mysterious world, the unspeakable happens. Many beloved characters... Dr. Wily! All Tails? Them, except the fighters are turned into spirits, unable to return to the real world. Oh, man. This is a spirit. Fighters can join forces with spirits oh, to enhance Jesus. their powers. Medusa? There's a massive amount of wildly different wow. spirits. Rambi! Mm -hmm. There are several classes of spirits. Standard spirits are dubbed novices. Stronger ones have the title advanced. Especially strong ones are called Ace. aces. And some are in a league of their own. Legend. Legend. Huh. The legendary spirits, okay. One primary spirit. Hey, gooey! Time. Nah. <laughs> a primary spirit's power will be added to the fighter who has it equipped. Okay. In some cases, yeah. these augmented So it is the equipment. Extremely powerful. Okay. Oh, you had all three. If a primary Moltres, spirit Zapdos, has and available slots, you can assign them support spirits. Hey, Cappy! Hey! While primary spirits enhance fighter stats, support spirits lend them additional skills. Auto heal. Ooh. Once the okay. In tournament play, set, that's gonna be banned. Oh yeah. Just calling it. I can already hear D1 going. Banned. 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 The main way to acquire spirits <laughs> is to win spirit battles. Okay. You'll find a variety of spirits lined up on the spirit board. Choose the one you want to battle. Hey, Galaxy Man! When you do, you'll face off against the hey, fighter whose abilities and personality are kind of sort of similar to the opposing spirit. In the case of the Lakitu's <laughs> finest spirit, you'll battle against Iggy Koopa and a group of small red Bowser. Iggy's riding high as Koopa Clown Park, of course. Here are some examples of other battles you can expect. Okay. Good. Gordo. King DDD. Oh. He's invisible? 
You gotta fight an invisible king D. But they only use Gordo's fucking act. Hey, Guts Man! My boy! Wow, giant rock man. Crumb. Fucking Owain. Yeah. Oh, oh! 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 Wow! Fucking Girahim? Jesus! Okay! So they're doing this right! Oh, that's Lip. cool. Okay. Yeah, because uh, lipstick is the thing that puts the flower on your head. Yeah. <sighs> lipstick. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Oh, oh God. fucking A. All armed with drills. Fuck you. Go handle with you, mother. Oh, wow. Boing. So I'm gathering is it's going to be real difficult. How? Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. You have Makes to fight sense. a giant rob. Uh huh. With the doctor. Oh, wow. Yep. Would it appear? Yes! Team Captain Falcon. So this is effectively sort of a reimagining of, uh... Yeah. Of, like, the of challenge of, like, mode. Challenge this modes. is yeah. challenge mode. But with, like, actual tangible benefits. Ooh! That was sick as shit. That was cool. Get the puppet fighter to acquire the spirit within. Mimic you! Aww. Even if you accidentally use the shield, best. the damage will carry over, so you'll have an advantage. Oh, okay. You get the guardian. All right. Uh -huh. Nice. Primary spirits have strength based on their type. Attack is strong against grab. Grab is strong against shield. Right. And shield is so effectively, yeah. Oh, makes sense. It's important to pick a spirit that has an advantage over your opponent. When you encounter traps like poison floors and slumber floors, be sure to prep yourself with an appropriate support spirit. Battle conditions offer hints before battle, so make sure to read them and form the right strategy. Was that spirit I just saw? What? Did you guys see what that was? Pause two girls? Hold on. Nick saw something. Make sure to read them and form the right strategy. Next one, maybe? It's the poison type. Oh. Battle conditions, lumber floors. Be sure to prep yourself with when you encounter. But yeah, that one. Uh, uh, Mio, Mio, and Mayu. No, no, go back uh, a little bit more. Okay. Okay. When you Melia. No. Keep going. No, 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 no. Traps like poison floors and slumber floors. Be sure to prep yourself with an. Now. Yes, it is. It's Mio and Mayu from Fatal Frame. Yep. Yes. Hell yeah. Nice. Yep. Good, <laughs> That's awesome. Good eye there, Nick. Good eye. I was just like, is that Fatal Frame? All I don't know. You can do. What the? It'll level up after battle. Oh. Or you can use snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Poppy Bros. Some spirits even have an enhanced form you can only unlock by leveling them up. Oh, oh nice! Spirits back to the real world. While you do have to say goodbye to that particular spirit, its core will stay. And by combining these cores, you can summon a new spirit. Oh. Hmm. That's you can neat. Also train spirits at Doc Dark Lewis is the diner. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite kind of spirit? <laughs> Mine's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Like I think I just saw geckos as well. Yep. Hey. Man. Hey, Napalm Man. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Toadette, leader of the expedition. You can beat them to unlock facilities. Gravity Man. Spirits can also be used to power up amiibo figure players. All right. 
You must bid them farewell, but you can repeat the process multiple times. Yeah, so it is the equipment system, but done better. Yeah. It's one great big collection of characters from many different series. Sigma. But just how many would you guess there are? Skull, Skull Kid. man. How many? Steve Falcon. Final Smash. I'm gonna go with you fight against the many. Spirit, the final Smash meter is enabled. Oh. Some spirit can help you fill up your gauge at a faster rate. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh. That's a callback to uh, to melee because that was yep. that was in the uh, that was in the uh, FMV at the beginning. You can enjoy combinations and situations. You get him, Isabel. Yep. The power of enemy allies is displayed here. Munkahar. Of course, stronger spirit teams make it easier to defeat weaker spirits. The more your power overshadows theirs, the less you'll be rewarded. It pays to have a fair fight. Oh, nice. Okay. While assembling a team, press the Y button for a recommendation that has a type advantage against the opposing spirit. Clap trap. The game will recommend support spirits who can help out in certain conditions. Keep that in mind. Okay. 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 So you actually do. Like you don't ask, have to. You don't have to min max. Yeah, it's like ask Madden, really. except instead of ask Madden, it's ask Sakurai. Given the way yep. spirit types interact in battle, think carefully when building your team, or balance your strengths in a two-on-two -two battle. Okay. Man. Man. Local wireless. The game lets you battle together with friends via local wireless, or we still haven't done the online, online thing, play. have we? Not really, no. We need to, to do that. To Nintendo Switch consoles, press the DR button to pull up the dashboard and select local cool. wireless. Which I still had my own Switch. There's no longer a need to yep. separate the online modes into for fun and for glory. Instead, matchmaking is based on three factors. Okay. <laughs> for online battles, you can set your preferred rules. Oh. These rules can be pre-registered, so you can quickly Stock. select your favorite playstyle. Oh, that's cool. Before battle, one player's preferred rules will be chosen at random, and all players will fight using those rules. You can also choose not to set any ah. preferred rules and let the others decide instead. If possible, the matchmaking system will find players with similar preferences and link them up for a battle. Cool. Okay. Global Smash Power is being factored into matchmaking, but it's still used as an online leaderboard as well. A high GSP score, such as 100,000, means you've got more points than 99,999 other players. Oh! Your GSP will change as the total population of players increases or you're overtaken. If you're yearning for a challenge, try increasing your global smash power so that you'll naturally end up with some more serious opponents. By the way, you can set a GSP score for each fighter. Oh. Fighters you haven't used yet will be assigned a placeholder GSP based on the highest score you've set with one of the other fighters. If you repeatedly self-destruct on purpose, you can face a penalty, like being disconnected. So uh. please don't do that. So please yeah. don't do that. Okay. As with any multiplayer game, a stable connection is very important. Yeah. For this is. reason, the matchmaking system. So in other words, they're making it so you can't stack. So even if you set your preferred or rules, stat pad. please understand that we can't promise you'll all be huh. Please understand. He as said it. Much, we'd appreciate it if you could make your connection as stable as possible. Oh, that's, that's nice as well. Oh. We've prepared a variety of other features for local wireless and online battles. Elite battles, okay. Once your global smash power is high enough, you can enter elite battles. Is that the air or is it yeah. raining balls outside? It's the, the air condition. Okay. <laughs> the back. You're good, period. After the game releases, we may adjust the game balance, and the team will definitely pay attention to the results of these. <laughs> oh, now that's interesting. Yes. Very nice. Everyone who plays online needs their own smash tag. If you meet a fellow player, you'll receive their smash tag. But it's not like you'll lose your smash tag, even if you lose a battle. You simply gain more tags as you win. No so it's like just lots of smash tags. Everybody That's pretty cool. That's cool. You can select short messages ah. and send them before and So pretty much the Mario Kart, uh, yeah. Mario Kart uh, 8. 
freely choose from a wide thanks. selection of varied preset messages. Yeah, once again, they're not gonna let you just go on. There oh and no! Say, well, but also it has to be translatable. True. To true. Yeah. Not every mode will be available while matchmaking runs in the background, but you can leave and enter some game modes. That's real cool. So you can warm up. Spectator a bit. mode returns once again, so you can watch other players' battles. That's Maybe sweet. Pick up some good tips that way. Hell yeah! Now we got this nuts. Form a two-player team and play together online with a single Nintendo Switch system. You'll be paired up hey. against two-player teams with the same setup. That's nice. When you want to play online, you can create a special type of room to fight other players. If you set the rules for one of these battle arenas, you can fight against your friends. Here, there are spots where you can join the battle, wait in line, or even spectate. Interesting. It all depends where you place your token. That's cool. When you're in a battle arena, this should come in handy. Wait, really? Yeah, because it's the voice chat. Oh. With the Nintendo Switch on hey, it's Mac, you can voice chat with others in battle arenas. It may become an essential <laughs> tool for some players. Oh, yeah. We are also developing a free service for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Ooh. and we're naming it Smash World. Instead of focusing on stats like okay. and loss records, we're allowing players to post gameplay videos, watch them, and more. Once the service starts, we'll offer regular updates so you can post to your heart's content. Hmm. All right. Next, I'd like to change topics oh. and talk a little about assist trophies that will support cool. your fighters in battle. Do you know which characters come from which games? Uh-oh. Dude. Yeah. Nani? From Maiden of Blackwater? Sick. Oh. Have you gotten to play that one, Nick? Mm -mm. It's the it's the uh It's either fourth or fifth. It's the Wii U one. Yeah. It's real good. Yeah, I haven't got to play hey, anything past the boy! I wish he'd been a playable fighter, but oh well. Yeah, that's not perfect system. No, it not perfect system. Yeah, I only recently found out there was actually a way oh. to that's from uh, Fire Emblem. <clears throat> you can actually play and translate uh, Fatal Frame 4 on your Wii. Nice. And I need to get that set up at some point. Yep. Well. I also need to actually beat the first one. Oh! On stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do that, man. Maybe oh, I yeah. The Wii U and I'm it, in. It plays Wii games. Yeah, we can do it. Hey! Spring Man! So apparently, it's pretty easy to get it to work. Out of the zoo. Hurrah! Yeah. <laughs> what up, Wiley? Oh, please don't, don't do anything to me. Oh! <laughs> Mario that's, Paint. That's awesome. I used, I used to love that game. Me too. Mario Paint, dude. One of the best things. I mean, we still have it. Hey, you're right. More Fire did. Emblem. Still got the original mouse pad and mouse. Yep. Yeah. I don't know that guy. Oh, Art Academy. All right, it makes sense. Hello there. <laughs> He's like, Goodbye. Bye. Guile! Hell yeah! Guile <laughs> team goes with everything. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the hair comb. The going good. Hey! <laughs> For virtual fighters? Yep. Nice. Hey, Callie Marie! This trophies is now 59. Actually, they outnumber the Pokemon this time. Oh. Assist trophies who can be KO'd Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. by the fighter who summoned them just before they're KO'd. That way, you won't lose a point to the other player. Oh. If you KO somebody's now, assist trophy, like then you lose. Other features uh -huh. of the game. Oh, yeah. If you want to Apple? review the controls or game modes, 
Press the ZR button to help. open the dashboard and look in here. I need help. some help. help. There are all kinds of helpful guides to check out. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Sentry Smash may look familiar to veterans. It feels great to keep smashing. Oh, it's hundred man mode, doesn't it? You can play on many different stages, and you can hmm. choose the music too. Dude, New Donk City looks so fucking good. In previous games, you had to unlock every fighter before playing All Star mode, but now you can play it right out of the box. Nice. Interesting. The currently available fighters will appear endlessly. You can save the replay data of your battles. Okay. <laughs> now you can create videos with it. That was fucking great. Nice. There's it's also a menu entry. where you can read those quick tips and tricks you see oh, during yeah. loading screens. When viewing them, you can sort by category or fighter. That's nice. Hmm. Challenges. Complete challenges to earn rewards. Yup. This time, each okay. page is sorted by category, and the layout looks more like a comic book. I like that. Yeah, it does. Press the button to check out each picture. <laughs> Do your stretches, boys. <laughs> the records menu tracks your battle history. There are five different options. You can view battle data separately for offline and online play. That's nice. <laughs> and you can actually Trade see, like... smash tags to score some in-game gold. In-game gold? Gold can be exchanged for music tracks, spirits, oh. and items for spirits mode. Nice. If you're collecting music, I recommend visiting the shop to find the ones you want, instead of just relying on challenges. Cool. You can enter the options menu by pressing the ZR button to open the dashboard. Okay. This one game supports 11 languages. Oh. I know this is very important to some of you. Yeah. For example, the voices of Pokemon are different in several languages. That's the great. Are also specific to each language. Yep. These options were highly requested and well worth the effort. And Chinese simplified and traditional. That's very important. Because uh, uh, Nintendo's really making a big push in China, so it makes sense. Oh! Oh, that's kick ass! That's kick ass! a radar that displays the location of all fighters. You can change its settings, including size. Oh! While it's limited to wireless and online play. You can make your teammates semi-transparent so you don't get distracted. Oh, that's so nice! Oh, no. If you're fighting against a friend on the same system, you can adjust the strength of your fighters. Ooh! Sometimes a player is just oh, too good, no. and you want to take measures to ensure it's a fair fight. Uh-huh. If that's the case, try using this feature. When custom balance is adjusted, a symbol will be displayed. Of course, this feature is not available during wireless and online battles. Right. Hey! You can customize your knee fighters and change their outfits. Oh, thank God. In addition to the voice options, there are a variety of outfits to choose from. Speaking of knee fighters, let me introduce you to some new outfits we added in. All right. Okay, what's well, what's on the docket? What do we got? Come on. Oh, uh, nice. Fucking Yiga Clan, nice. Oh, hey. Two. Okay. Cool. Specifically for the Gunners. That's yeah. That's my boys. Hey. Oh wow. That's cool. Arms. Yep. That's real great. Hey, Chibi Robo! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I can tell which one. Uh, that's going to be one of your favorites. That one's great. Oh, oh no, that's wow. the one! Oh, get some custom Robo action up in there. Yes. Solera's losing his mind. Labum? Oh! 
<laughs> that's good. That's really cool. Oh, that's Wait, so... Wait, what? I don't know. Anyway, there's something I should point out. As I said, we've revealed all of the fighters you can find in the game. Uh-oh. Hello? Even more coming post-launch. While we've already implemented a huge roster of fighters, yeah. there's always room for more. <laughs> which mm -hmm. means we're leaving the opportunity open to add in more fighters as paid DLC. I don't Fair. know what they're going to do. Since we already included every fighter from the past games, that means there are no more fighters to include unless we develop new fighters from scratch. Ah. Oh. I'm talking about Echo Fighters. Not Echo we'll Fighters. We'll be developing and selling sets that will include one fighter, one stage, and multiple music tracks. Okay. The price for each set is expected to be $5.99. We'll have to see. Not too bad. At the same time, we will offer the Fighters Pass. That's five fighters, five stages, and all of their music tracks. All sets will be released through the end of when February 2020. The fighters pass. Ideally, we should reveal what's included before it becomes available for purchase. However, please allow us to offer this pass before we're ready to reveal its contents. I hope only those who are confident in its value will purchase it. Okay. Again, the price is twenty four ninety nine. Okay. For all five sets. So it's a slight discount. Now that yeah. Confirmed the development of this DLC. Please know that we'll be working really hard on it. What? I wonder if I'll ever get to blink, blink, blink. Ha! Huh. By the way, here's one purchase bonus you'll get with the Fighters Pass. Okay. It's a me sword fighter outfit based oh, that's on cool. Rex from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh -huh. We decided which fighters to include when we started planning, so we couldn't add characters from titles like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which was announced after planning had started. Yep. I hope this outfit will help you feel like you're playing as Rex. Okay. We're also including some music from the Xenoblade Chronicles series. All right. Give it cool. a listen at Gaara Plains sometime. <clears throat> Other Xenoblade Chronicles characters will also appear as spirits. Nice. We've yet to create any of the paid DLC, and we haven't locked down any release dates, but we'll start working on them as soon as we're finished with the main game. It may take around a year or so to finish releasing all the DLC. But, on a separate note, we're currently developing something. Something you'll get for free as a limited time offer if you buy the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game now. Okay. It isn't finished yet, but I want to give you a special sneak peek. Okay. Gotta push them pre-orders. Hey. So everybody knows the pre-orders are basically a scam nowadays, so... Only if the value isn't worth it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hello. Oh, fuck. Really? Uh-huh. 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 Oh! -ho 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 -ho! Okay, I did not expect that. That's so goofy. That is... That's real goofy. That's crazy. It's Final Smash better be Petey. Yum. Yeah. That's oh, so good. I love it. Oh! Whoa! The distance. Yeah, it's Petey! <laughs> that's my boy! <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay, that's real dumb, yes. but I like it. <laughs> that's real dumb. That's right. Piranha Plant will take root in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And not as an assist trophy, but as an actual fighter. It can spit poison. Blech. Fire off spiky balls and perform long range attacks. Gotta love those spiky balls. Is full of <laughs> it's final smash. An awesome Any attacks. Ball. If you get caught, <laughs> well, let's just say it won't end well for you. Piranha Plan is scheduled for completion after the launch of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We've gotten a little head start on it, but it probably won't be ready until a couple of months after launch. <laughs> Please stay tuned. Remember, Piranha Plant is a free, limited time offer for the physical version of the game. 
you only need to go through the My Nintendo register game by the end of register game before February. We're also okay. creating an amiibo. Hey! That amiibo looks really good. Like, look at the detailing on the pot. Yeah, I know. It looks so Later good. Today, you'll be able to pre-purchase the game after finishing this Nintendo Direct. Oh, okay. So basically, there's a whole character I won't get unless I can afford a Switch um, in the game before February. That's what it sounds like. Wait. I hope he means it's only free for a limited time, and I could still buy it later, at least. Yeah, I think that's what they mean. Hopefully. Because that would be really lame. Uh, I'll look into this afterwards. Okay. That's it for the last Nintendo Direct for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate before the game launches. Alright. But before we go... I should mention that the adventure mode in this oh, game Oh, yes! Yes! That said, mm. all these characters Oh, I knew the it! I knew they had to have an adventure mode! Knew it! I'll show you how it all begins. Fuck, I saw Olaf from Advance Wars. I went, what? <laughs> okay then, please look forward to the game's release. Okay. Wait. Don't let a single one get away. Good. Okay. Oh, fuck oh, no. Shit. Oh, Whoa. fuck no. Is that taboo? That's the Is, is that the villain from the from subspace? You need to take down about 10. Still your fears. It's now or never. We will win this. I know we will. Okay. Uh. Oh sh it, it is. That has to be taboo. Oh fuck. Show Oh god. Shulk's using his premonition. Mm hmm. Wait, what? Oh. Shh. Oh, damn. Oh, no. I love that Captain Falcon was trying to hop in the car. <laughs> oh, crap. There goes Palatina, and there goes, yeah, Pit and Dark Pit. <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, strike a pose, Wee Fit Trainer. Yeah. Oh, shit, Kirby. Kirby's dealt with this shit before. Well, here's one thing as well. Don't forget, who created Kirby? Mashed Potato Samurai. Exactly. Kirby's so dealt with he... this shit before. Oh, man. Oof. So what? Kirby just managed to jump into, like, hyperspace before it got him? I think so. And... Whoa. Whoa. What? Okay. Everything. It... Oh, shit. Okay. Oh god, okay. Wh Whoa. Spirits. Yep, there he, he did get away. And then the lyrics kick in. Yeah, that's the theme. That's that's the mm -hmm. they added lyrics to the theme. And then it's the awesome. lyrics kick in. Oh. Wait. Oh yeah, they're creating negatives. Statues. Oh no. Shadow form. Oh gosh. You have to... Oh. Oh, wow. That's intimidating. That's oh. fucking scary as hell. So you have to free them all. Oh, you can play as other characters then. Good. Okay. 
Well, I don't doubt that you play as other characters. I think maybe Holy it'll be like hell, but wow. look at all this. So they're pretty much doing like a massive like RPG style map, like an old school JRPG uh, overworld. And how do you feel? What do you mean? Like, how does this make you feel? Amazing, dude. I mean, right? I'm so happy. <laughs> right? Because this is just, this is everything and then some that I wanted. Well, there was more than enough to kill anything that moves, so, uh... And oh. the boss battle! Jesus. Yes! Bring back the boss battles! Oh... Well, Nate's gotta oh. change pants. No, I don't have to change pants. <laughs> I just have to, like... My mind has... Just to... breathe World a of Light, okay. World of Light is what that's called. So... Oh, boy! Oh, boy! I just have to mentally, oh, like, yeah. take in everything that just happened. That was just... All right, I didn't have anything spoiled for me. So. Good on you. <laughs> I just had, like, something spoiled for me that I had not seen a previous direct was for Ridley? already. Huh? Was it Ridley? Uh, it was actually uh, the dog from Duck Hunt. I didn't know that was announced. Dude, he was in He was in 4. Didn't know that either. Never played it. I, I could have let you... I let you borrow 4. You could have played it. I didn't play it. <laughs> Sorry. Nick, what the fuck, man? I just okay. played through Metroid, and I wanted to give stuff back before something happened to it, because I can't it's afford fine. to replace it. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so... Uh, also, I, I saw that, like, every character that had ever been in one before was coming back, and yes, I, I didn't know that for sure either, that so that was apparently away. previously announced. That's one thing that blew me away as to how many characters are in this. No, well, see, a... here's the thing, is it doesn't matter anymore, because I get to play as Roy again, so... Hey, you're happy. Roy was <laughs> in 4, also. Roy, oh, he was? Roy yeah, okay. Roy was a DLC. Roy's our boy. Roy's our boy. Roy's also, our boy. And also, I'm happy that we're... Okay. I don't know if everything... You know, all the cutscenes that have been included are going to be in the, you know, the adventure mode on this. I don't know. If it is, awesome. If not, all well and good still. I'm still happy that we're getting an adventure mode. Hopefully this will be a... Hopefully this will be what what we need. I mean, because this is what we need ever since the Subspace Emissary. Because ever since Subspace Emissary, I've I've missed an adventure mode like this where all the characters come together and everything is interconnected. I've missed that. I've wanted that for so long, and it looks like we're getting it. And I'm I'm so freaking happy. It's pretty cool. It's just. Does anybody else ever get anxiety over the number of games and the length of them that they are becoming nowadays and uh -huh. how you don't have fucking time to play? Yes, sir. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Well, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> one, on one hand, yeah, but on the other hand, it's just like... I mean, we have anxiety over everything. Mm -hmm. Us three. Yeah. He's, he's fine. Oh, well, me, I'm, I'm cool with whatever. I mean, there's... <laughs> me, me, I want to... What? Piranha Plant will also be available as paid DLC separate from Fighter's Pass. Okay. At a later time. Okay. So if you don't get it before January 31st, 2019, you can still get, get it. it later. Okay. Yeah. That's good, at least. It's not <laughs> It's not like the... Okay, there, as much as I love Gears of War, there was one bullshit thing in Gears of War 3 that... Even though I did get the, the version of the game that included it, the fact that it was available for everyone else, even after an X amount of time kind of, like, sent, you know, rubbed me the wrong way... Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, uh, if you got the, uh, like, deluxe edition, I mean, the deluxe edition that included the statue, the, uh, cog tag and everything, uh, you got to play as Adam Phoenix, uh, father of Marcus Phoenix. Yep. In multiplayer. So, I thought that was awesome. And actually, the code was on the back of the cog tag that you actually had to pull out and look at the back of it and download it that way. Nice. Which was really freaking cool. My thing about stuff like that is I think that's fucked up not to put him in the game for everyone to start with. I think it's fucked up to say, yeah, you get this cool thing if you pay us extra money for it. Well, I it's not like... That's, it, it's I don't like, like well, extra money, extra like content. It's not like he added anything to, the, to it. It's just, it was a cosmetic thing. You know I, I, mean? I don't care if it's cosmetic or not. It's like, why do you have to divide up the game to entice people to spend extra money? Well... I think it's just it, it depends on how far you're willing to go for something. Because me, yeah. me and Zach, we were dedicated Gears fans. Like, dedicated. Like, I remember when I brought the first one home, and me and him stayed up pretty much two days in a row 
trying to fit, you know, trying to finish it and get all the stuff for it and everything. And it was fun. And then when the second one came out, same thing. Third game rolled around. I had a job and I could actually afford to make the payments on getting the ultimate edition, and I did. And I think the benefits that you get for that, I think if you lock away the majority of the game behind a paywall, you know, like on disc DLC, like some games do. <laughs> Looking at you, EA. Fuck on you know, disc DLC. It, yeah. I just have a personal moral ethical problem with any in-game content being locked behind a paywall of an extra amount upon release instead of putting it well, completely in the game. Dude, like, extra stuff that comes with the game is fine. Like, giving you a fucking Lancer replica for buying, like, a, you know, a $250, like, deluxe Ultimate Edition. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's badass. Like, yeah. But don't take anything out of the original game and tell us that, you can only have this if you give us more money than you were originally going to. Well, okay. More than the original $60. Like, I, I just have an ethical problem with it. No, I, and I understand that. And, and honestly, this is just, uh, this is just uh, well, where, you know, where opinions vary. Yeah. Well, so the, the question becomes, and this is, this is the important distinguishing factor, was it ready to be put in the game and then decided to keep that back? Or is there still development being done so that this can be added? Mm. It's like well, that's why on disc DLC really pisses me off. Oh yeah, yeah, pisses everybody off. Yeah, like in this case, it seems like okay, we're working on getting these characters coded and balanced and everything. It's not ready for release yet. Mm. Yeah, so it's like yeah, we're working on these, but they're not done. No, that no. I have no problem with because it's adding more content. Some people still argue that that is, in their opinion, still releasing an incomplete game, though, because they're like, why not wait and get them done before you release your game? And well, have, it's not. Well, everyone this isn't, for the this isn't price. like the days where everything was locked at a certain amount of stuff you could have in a game. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, you know. The N sixty four cartridges, the PlayStation, you know, the PlayStation, PlayStation Two. Yes. Up yes. until the, yeah, the only way it would have been to literally sell a second cartridge to hook the top one into, kind of like the Sonic. Yeah. Oh like, man, yeah. Sonic and Knuckles. You see, you see yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> Dude. You see stuff like that was really cool. Yeah. But but you see, uh, some games were able to do that back in the day, but now with digital media being what it is. It's a whole lot easier to do that, and it's a whole lot easier for companies. Like, I hate DLCs that they release just so people will buy it, instead mm -hmm. of this like, actually being something that adds one to One of story. the main things that really pisses me off is retailer-exclusive DLC. DLC. Stuff where you'll be like, oh, if you get it at Best Buy, you get this, but if you get it at GameStop, you get this. And I'm like, fuck you. I was like, fuck all of you. I'm not well, getting it any, well, at any of those because you assholes did well, that's, that. Well, that's capitalism at work, dude. I mean, as, yeah. much, as, I, as much as I love capital, you know, there's no 100% there's no like perfect way of doing things. Mm. And let me ask you this, Nick. Say Alter Grave takes off. Mm -hmm. Walmart offers you $5 million straight up to say, okay, we only want you to sell your deluxe edition of your CD at our store. I mean, I can't speak for the rest of my band members, but personally I would be like, no. You, you wouldn't? Yeah. I okay, mean, $5 million is really cool. That's $1 million for each of... Actually, that's... Uh, a million and a quarter for each of our band members. Yep. Yeah, but, um, like, I just have an ethical problem with that. Well, it's, well, you see, and that's you. Mm. You see, it goes from, it goes from person to person, and it goes from company to company. You see, certain companies don't want to do that. You see, people, like, companies that are more led by the artists aren't wanting to do that. Because I can't tell you but for sure that the rest of the band might not be like, fuck you, Nick, that's a million well, and a quarter well, apiece, well, like see, we're doing you, that. You see, but money... I would just be like, I don't want to do that, guys. But, no, I know, and that's your moral standpoint. And it's yeah. like, if you but guys want to do that, But that's sure, you, you see. But, not me. but me, on the other hand, I don't mind paying DLC that I find worthwhile. That's just like Mass Effect, when they had certain DLCs, that I was just like, I don't know if I should get this or not. I don't know if this is worth it or not. And then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, when uh, when the third game had an ending that I didn't like, and the majority of the fans out there didn't like, 
EA, or not EA, but Bioware actually bit the bullet and released... Put forth effort to fix it. Yeah, well, yeah. not fix it. I mean, the ending was still... The ending was still... Uh, yeah, I heard even after they this. did more to it, it but still wasn't that no, good. Well, no, no. It was a lot better because they fixed a lot of the the plot holes and, the, and a lot of the stuff that didn't make sense. Instead, what you got was a was a better version of the game, but not the version that we as the Mass Effect fandom deserved. Because what we got was a rushed game. Because Casey Hudson, I love Casey Hudson, he's one of the best one of the best game directors of all time. He himself went on record to say, if we would have had one more year, the amount of variation you would have had at the ending of Mass Effect would have made your head spin. Yeah. You would have had to have replayed the game at least ten times to get all the different Damn. endings. To me, when I heard him say that, I was just like, EA, you bunch of freaking hacks. You have no respect for your gaming, for your audience. You have no respect for your audience as gamers, and you have no respect for the artist wanting to tell a great story and make something that will have such a lasting effect. That's like me when I played the Everybody second knows that about EA. So. Well, yeah. Well, that's like me. Well, this was back in 2012. This is back yeah. when EA still had a modicum of... of Some sort of... Humility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Integrity. Yeah, they had a little bit of integrity left. But it was after that, everyone started to just shit all over EA, and rightfully so. And not only that, but they also ruined the Battlefield series. Yep. When, they, when they rushed development to hard, of Hardline, and they put it on Volition. V oh my god, dude. The fact that they killed Volition, and you waste Amy Hennig. Or you, 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 waste, <laughs> you waste probably one of the best video game developers of all time. All because you want to kowtow down to freaking Disney and scrap the Star Wars game they're working on. And instead, oh no, we're going to pass off a bullshit uh, Battlefield game onto you. Good luck with that. Oh, it's not successful? All your fault. Guess what? Shut your fucking studio down. Thanks a lot, assholes. God! Well, Nate's getting triggered about stuff that this video a isn't even about. Trigger, so, <laughs> no, I'm mad. I hate the word triggered. I'm not triggered about anything. I'm fucking mad. Well, that's what it means. Hey, Nate. <laughs> Take a minute. <laughs> Sit right there. No, you, honestly, I'm good. Did you get flipped turned upside down? No. <laughs> Sit right there, and Stop I'll tell that. you all about how I became the king of this shit show of a company. Yeah. Yeah. So The king of this couch. <laughs> so you want to talk about the difference between, like, good DLC and bullshit DLC. Well, uh, I have two or two really distinguishing factors. Yeah. Um, Go for and it. And it's basically, okay, like, something that obviously completes a game mm -hmm. like a game that releases and it's just easy to tell well this was missing parts mm -hmm. and it was released afterwards and there's multiple ways you can tell that um yeah. i mean perhaps it's just you can tell a story wasn't done and then they release the conclusion later and make you pay for it mm -hmm. perhaps it's activision where you know they purposefully had a complete <laughs> game and then they chopped it all up into bits and sold you them a bit at a time uh -huh. um uh, and I, then there is stuff just, that just, is a complete uh, game, and then there is actual content released after the obviously complete <laughs> game that is yeah. definitely something new made after the fact that expands on that. And that's usually what I like is expansions. Yeah. Now, okay, uh, uh, actually, Nate, let other people talk. No, here, no, I have to clarify something uh, before the I'm comment section anyways. rips me to fucking shred. <laughs> it wasn't Volition Games, it was Visceral. Visceral, yeah. Okay, Visceral, Dead Space, yeah. Yeah. People were very pissed that you can make a series as good as Dead Space, and then your fucking publisher can shut you down. Sorry, I had to. I had to clear that up before the comment section. I'm still pretty trip. salty about Go that ahead. as well. Okay. <laughs> so, one of the best examples, and I use this example a lot, like examples of good DLC, mm. is New Vegas. Um, I didn't ever play any other DLC. So. New Vegas as a game felt pretty complete. Ooh. And then they took you to four other areas and they did very similar things with Fallout 3. Fallout 3, you completed a story and it, it felt pretty complete. And then, you know, you added more to it. You actually even added more after the story. Yeah. Like you went further. But so Fallout New Vegas had two types of DLC. So there were the expansions, uh, like the four story expansions, that were fan fucking tastic. 
Then there were the Courier's Stash and uh, Gunrunner's Arsenal. So Courier's Stash, there were four different uh, retailer-exclusive pre-order packs. Mm. Courier's Stash just gave them all to you, which is a little busted at the beginning of the game. More than a little busted at the beginning of the game. And the weapons were stuff you would normally be able to get, although some of it you got a little early. Like, you got a grenade launcher. Yeah. Moment one. Which is stupid fun. That's also, in my opinion, it's a type of DLC, and this is totally personal opinion. Some people might enjoy the fuck out of this, but mm -hmm. I personally don't like DLC that unbalances the play experience at the beginning of the game. Um and one of the reasons that I thought Dark Souls 2 was fucking hilarious is because they gave you this whole weapon pack. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all really cool looking and everything. They're all absolute trash compared to any other starting weapon that you get in <laughs> your yep. starting class yeah. at the beginning of the game. And I was just oh, like, yeah. all right, <laughs> like, at least I can't say that like it unbalances it. It actually would serve a challenge if I tried to use one of them. Yeah. So like, I, But it's like Far Cry. It's like they had, I think, something like that. No, it was Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's like they had all those weapons in there, and I just looked at them, and I was like... These are all garbage. That looks like it's going to break the game. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. if I start using that because I can right now, it looks like it's just going to make the game stupidly easy, and it's going to yeah. remove all sense of progression and just take out a fun factor of the game. Well, so in my, in my opinion, those kind of DLCs are bad, but some people might like it because they're like, oh, well, I kind of have trouble with this game even on easy because I'm not really a... You know, gamer, I, I'm just yeah. a casual gamer, yeah. so I'll use this badass shotgun it gives me. You know, it's like, cool, yeah. But well, like, the shotgun, like, the weapons weren't necessarily badass, and you did, you only got, like, a certain amount of ammunition for them, mm. and some of them you would not be able to buy ammunition from for for a while. Yeah. Uh, that grenade launcher, yeah, you were going to be waiting a while. It was a nice little problem solver. Yeah. But it's not game breaking uh, dlc packs like that are almost like playing resident evil 3 on easy where it gives you the fucking uzi with like all the ammo uh -huh. like and it's like that's not even really the real game if you play it that way mm. um and then like gunrunner's arsenal took like added in some guns to the game that didn't have mods and mm. added like moddable versions which yeah okay but it was uh it was a little weird yeah. In that. And like there's, you know, of course mods that fix a lot of that stuff. Um but I'm trying to think of like actual DLC that I did like a lot. Like really good DLC that I have played. Um Arkham Knight comes to mind as one of the most disappointing packs of DLC I've ever played. I mean Arkham Knight is one of the most disappointing games I've ever seen. I mean, I enjoyed <laughs> the game. Like I liked it a lot still. Like it was not as good as Arkham City, by no, any means. God no. But, um and I mean, there were some things that I was just like, eh, about it, but I, I, mean, I liked it. Um, but, yeah, the DLC packs for that, considering the price, were just very, very underwhelming amounts of content. Yeah. Um, I guess my favorite DLC, even though it's not downloadable content, it's downloadable nowadays. Yeah. But the best expansions and extra content, in my opinion, still go to World of Warcraft. Because... Every time they do an expansion, it basically completely changes the game into another game. Yeah. It's almost like a sequel release yeah. every time they do it. And that, in my opinion, is the best way to do extra content after the main games come out. Is like something that essentially is the equivalent of a continuation of the complete game. Yeah, like World of Warcraft, the way <laughs> like, they do their expansions, it continues the story. Mm -hmm. Well... Yeah, like it, and it, I mean, obviously, you can't and do not that even like but. continues the story. It makes the game like progress in time. Yeah, like the game is not in a static state of time. It's like, all right, so this expansion's coming out. We're going to move the game world forward it's in like, time. So there was this bridge in, uh, what was the name of the zone? It's one of the it's second zones you can go to if you play as a human or mm -hmm. the third. So I think you go to Westfall first, then you go to Red Ridge. Yeah, Red Ridge Mountains. There's a bridge there. Since Vanilla WoW, it was under construction. There were guys working on it, and there were boards sitting around, and there were pieces of the bridge missing and everything. Mm -hmm. And 
I was like, they were going to fix this bridge. <laughs> like, three expansions later, it wasn't fixed. And then I noticed when I played the most recently, I was like, hey, they finally fixed the bridge. and Red <laughs> It's done. That's good. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a minor thing, but that's a nice little yeah, detail. Yeah, it's like little touches like that. That's pretty yeah. cool. And then they had Cataclysm, which actually completely blew up the world and, like, made entire zones flood and, like, made giant chasms the and bridge places that weren't before. It? No, the bridge is still there. Um, Son but, of a bitch! Yeah, like that fucking bridge. It's just that was really neat because they had that whole established world that everybody was getting really used to, and then they made one little side world that was off, um, and then another little side world, and then they were like, "All right, let's go back to the original world and completely give it a makeover." Basically, mm -hmm. and that was really mm -hmm. neat how they did that. And then um, with Battle for Azeroth, they've kind of done it a different way almost because they sort of went back to some of the original places, and I think they actually uh, did what they call... Um, what do they call that? Is it basically, they segment the game off, and mm -hmm. if you've done certain story segments, that area will change for you. Yeah. Let's say your friend hasn't done that yet, they instance. and they go to the same place, you actually wouldn't see your friend standing it's, there it's because they're a, yeah, they're in a yeah. different fa phase. Yeah, a different yeah. phase of the game is what they call it. Yeah. But... Kind of cool how they do stuff like that. Um, but DLCs I've paid for, I think my most enjoyable DLC of all time was probably the first monster that I bought for Evolve back when I played it. Oh. Because they had, you know, the complete Evolve out. They had three, you know, amazing monsters. Yeah. Like, they were all three, like, classics. Uh, and then they finally put out another one, and it felt like an actual, like, addition to what they had already completed, and he was fun as fuck to play as, and I was like, I, I, I enjoyed that I spent money on this, even though I didn't play it for too much longer after yeah. that, but I just can't think of any DLC that I've ever just been like, yeah, like, <laughs> but I also haven't played other DLC that I know for a fact is supposed to be amazing. Yeah. Like, like I haven't gotten the Witcher stuff yet, yeah. Witcher 3. Um, I still never played that original Red Dead uh, Redemption zombie. Undead Nightmare. Undead Nightmare. Yeah, it's supposed Undead to be Nightmare. badass. Real good. Which is really good. Um, Liked um, it a lot. Like, yeah, but, all the New uh, Vegas DLC, like, that's, like, the Fallout 3 and New Vegas DLCs are probably my favorites, just because it takes the game and then it's like, all right, so let's do something different but let's, like, expand on the game world. Like, for example, one of the DLCs uh, for 3 is like, hey, you know, you hear about this, uh, Anch like, they've been talking for a long time about the uh, Battle of Anchorage, which is one of the first things where it's like, all right, we've got some tensions rising now. And Operation Anchorage, it's like, okay, we have to get into this vault or this, like, cache of weapons. The only way to do that is is for somebody to go into this simulation and complete it, and they have to have a pit boy. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you have a pit boy. Go in here and play Call of Duty. Fair enough. It's not quite Call of Duty, but it, kind it's, of it. it's kind of Call of Duty. But the thing is, it actually like expands on it, but it also does it in such a manner where they're like, yeah, the guy who uh, had us make this simulation is a nut, and it's all wrong. Like, yeah. this is... Like, he's he's just like he's picking out all these little minutia, and they're it's not at all historically accurate, but it just expands on things so much. But the game still feels complete without it. Yeah. Also, just realize I'm stupid because I literally have just played one of the best DLCs I've ever played. Which that Bloodborne DLC is bitching. Old Hunters <laughs> is so <laughs> kick ass. Yes. Old Hunt yes. and kick -ass. Bloodborne was a complete game without that. Absolutely, it was. But that added on to it. Yeah, you Hell get yeah. you get more right, even better. Lore, you like, get more much. goodies. You get like a tougher experience. Yeah. My only complaint about well, I mean, it, it was about the original Bloodborne as well, but like they literally have like two kinds of stats basically for their weapons: strength or skill. Mm -hmm. And the balance of how many weapons they put in for each feels like it's like strength and skill. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And I'm just like, why couldn't they have made it a little yeah, more that's even? That's why a lot of people yeah. go with a cane because it's. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I love weapons. the cane, but it's like then you have such limited options for what you want if you want a secondary like, mm -hmm. weapon. So, True. You're um, not wrong. Basically, I'm waiting to get Simon's bow blade, and it looks like I'm still not going to get it before I'm basically ready to finish the game anyway. So. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. Yeah. Um, that yeah. weapon is kick-ass, and you're going to like it. It's basically right. if you want to do most of the weapons in the game, you need to basically make a strength arcane build. You, you, need, uh, you need to get the Rakuyo. Trust me. 
you will love that weapon. I think I can get it since I beat Maria. You're you're in the the fishing village. I can show you where to get it if you want. Probably. But uh, there's two shark giants you're going to have to fight. Uh, I've already killed one of them and then got wrecked by the other one. So. Yeah, just trust All me. Right. You're going to. No, these are two more. <laughs> We've talked All a long right. time yeah, about we're, random Yeah, things. we're so in a complete on. different thing. So, I mean, uh, and this was 40 minutes long here, to start with. So. Yeah. This was. Uh, this how, was how, far, how long are we going? An hour and 12 minutes. That's not the worst we've done. No. Um, so, you can always split it in half if you really need to. No. <laughs> no. Release the whole friggin' thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, everybody out there, thank you all so much for tuning okay, in. Okay, wait, wait. All right, two things. Number one, if you're still watching at this point, favorite DLC. Like, favorite best DLC, in your opinion, go in the comments. I That's a good one. We like hearing these. These are great. Yeah. Number two, Smash Ultimate looks fucking good. Yes, it <laughs> does. Uh, let us know. Uh, like, hey, let us know. Who you uh, want to try out yeah, who, as your uh, as your starter main? Yeah, like what what new characters do you think are going to be sweet? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to be playing as Roy. So. Hey, no, that's <laughs> I haven't legit. got to play as Roy since or how about back Simon? in the day. You want to try? Play I Simon? only hope that we still have the chance <laughs> for Roy. All right. Oh yeah, I, I love it every Roy, time. Roy's Roy's here. Roy is our boy. Roy Roy's is here. our boy. <laughs> I think I think it's in. Okay, all right. cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning in. This was uh, the Nintendo Direct for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on November 1st, 2018. And, uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed what you've seen here, leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to see the original video in its original uh, its original form, the link, to the link to the video is in the description down below. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Ben. I'm Kyra. I'm Nick. And, we'll and s- Peanut is under this blanket yes. being a sleepy boy. And we will mm. see you later, everyone. Peace out. Oh, <laughs>